Life can be a little crazy sometimes. In these bizarre moments we live in, we need a podcast to bring us together, to inspire others during all this chaos. Who? Who will step up to the challenge, may I ask you? I'm Sean Graves, so I can't fix everything. With the help of my guests, we can help inspire each other. Do you want to get more comfortable? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, move let me uh, put that on the uh, chassis, actually. Okay. Since I'll just like lounge properly. That's a weight on this guitar. Yeah, I think it's mostly the internals because it's the transacoustic. Yeah. Um, so it's got a, all that interesting, I, I guess, gear inside of it that lets it yeah. have that internal chorus and internal reverb, and it's just so much fun. <laughs> Later on, I'd love for you to play for it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I've got a couple of songs I can play on that. Um. I've actually been trying to uh, like work on a lot of self-improvement stuff recently yeah. uh, because we've had so much time off. I know, right. <laughs> and <We are. laughs> I would I would literally play video games for like six hours or like eight hours even when I was in quarantine, mm -hmm. and I realized that I was just like <laughs> just a fat piece of shit. And I was like, <laughs> it's like no, I I can't be doing that. Like, there's so much more that I could be doing, and like I'm usually a very uh, self-improvement focused kind of and person. you're a very active person too. Yeah, and yeah. like I, I try to be. And so I ended up kind of like scheduling out my days off mm -hmm. to where I could actually have, you know, um, like an hour of working out, mm -hmm. uh, push myself a little. Mm -hmm. uh, after pneumonia, that's really hard. It's it's a lot to get back into and it. you were in quarantine because of the pneumonia. Yeah, because right? I had all the... Yeah, exactly. I had all the uh, symptoms... Um, for COVID, of the, of the Rona. <laughs> yeah, of the Rona, and I was like, I was like, oh shit, uh, maybe I should go get tested. So I went Did up you there. Get straw down yes. The nose? Oh my God. I uh, know that down the nose, like or down the mouth, they were like, oh, this is for like strep and everything like that. But this one, this big ass motherfucker is going right to your brain. I was like, Some no. Shit. Yeah, I was like, I was like, there's gonna be like little yellow or little pink pieces coming off. And so, like, oh. it goes, like, all the way up in there, and they pull it out um, after, like, nine seconds. They have to, like, dig in there. So oh, you're just kind of like, yeah. oh, no, that nine please stop. That got to feel like forever. Yeah, because, like, at first you're like, okay, I can handle this. And then they start moving. You're like, no, <laughs> this is not okay. This is this is how I die. <laughs> oh uh, but, like, it's over really fast, and your eyes just water. Yeah. But um, I, I really I figured out. so many sensitive pieces oh yeah that are just being vile and especially when you're like <laughs> when you're already like really stuffed up like that uh, stuffed up mm -hmm. and you can't really talk that well and you can't really breathe so they just shove past all that even though it's like inflamed you're just like oh why oh my God. but um and this is for the betterment of you know making sure you don't exactly like, like i like i have to do it because i'm like i'm not gonna just not but that's why i was having that trouble breathing and i was like worried so I had like 102 fever, uh, I had like body aches and uh, I had a, real, a lot of trouble breathing. I was like, oh no, I'm gonna die. I'm not, not even 25 yet. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm already pretty peaceful. So I was like, well, if I do die, I'm gonna not die a gold player in Overwatch. I wanna be a platinum player. <laughs> uh, I was just like, it's oh like, is that really what I need to be doing right now? Is that where life's at right now? That's that's exactly where it was at for me, cause I was like, I was like, there's nothing else for me. I'm just gonna play a video game until I die, and that's fair. And uh, anyway, I don't die as I'm talking right now, but I'm like, after quarantine, I was very like annoyed with myself, cause I didn't do anything. Like I I was just two healthier. weeks, huh? First. You got healthier first. Yeah, I got healthier in the first week. Uh, still had like trouble breathing and everything, but I started fighting back through it. Um, and I started coming up with a plan because I was very annoyed with what I couldn't do or what I didn't do for myself. Right. And like, I couldn't work out because obvious reasons. So I'm starting to get back into working out about an hour a day. Oh. Um, for the days off, I also do about an hour to an hour and a half of Spanish, uh, okay. cause it's something I've always wanted to learn and hell having my last name be Espinosa is kind of regretful every time I say it because they're like, oh, you speak Spanish? I'm like, ha, no. <laughs> um, you know, I had an old friend, a old co-worker, uh, I can't remember her original last name, but 
it was Spanish as well, yeah. if you will. Um, and that she was literally just sitting there going like, I hate my last name. And I'm like, why? And she goes, because everyone thinks I speak Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Rodriguez. Her last oh. name was Rodriguez. I yeah, mean, that's that's hello. Like hello Hispanic. The most Hispanic last name on the face of the planet, like, um, like, uh, Ali, like, O'Connor. Yeah. The most Irish last name on the face of exactly. the planet. Exactly. It's like you speak. know exactly where that person's from. You hope that they know how to speak Gaelic, and this person's as American as apple pie. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, you know, yeah. I I think. Uh, I think the weirdest thing is, is that, you know, uh, whenever you, like, whenever, just from, like, my uh, side of it, mm -hmm. whenever I start thinking about how, you know, I don't know Spanish and I meet another person that doesn't know Spanish, but, like, Mendoza and I don't have any Spanish-speaking ability, but we're, like, like, we both listen to country music and, like, uh, you could effectively call me a Texican because I'm not okay. really Mexican, but... Yeah, I've I'm, heard of this before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very, you know, like, I'm very Southern. Not so, really. Actually, like, because like, when I think of Southern, there are people who we work with who exude paint. that <laughs> Southern energy. Mm -hmm. And they wear it on their sleeve and on their chest, on their heart, and they are, they are blood dripping of it. Yeah. And... Just Oh. Please repeat what you said. My Siri, every time he sees, every time he hears the word Siri, yes. Uh, <laughs> he thinks I'm talking to him. Could you try again? No, go away, please, Siri. Okay. <laughs> All every right. Time, <laughs> every single time my phone thinks he hears the word Siri, yes. He thinks I'm saying. Just had to make sure. He thinks I'm saying his name. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have that's to so... stop myself from saying those word that word specifically. Otherwise, oh, yeah. He just starts butting into a conversation he doesn't belong in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, back to these uh, uh, these uh, very country sleeve bearing people. I don't fit you into that archetype. Yeah. And I've been using that term very strongly these days, <laughs> yeah. the author who I'm reading. Uh, You're yeah. reading Stephen King, It. Yeah. Going back to that. I had no idea you had a cat. Yeah, her name's Fiskig. Fisky? Fizzgig. Fiskig. Yeah, it's from, uh, Hello. the name comes from a character in a uh, oh, okay. Jensen film. Yeah. The whole monster goes, wah, 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 wah. Oh. Yeah. So are you just as terrifying? No, she's not. A terrifying <laughs> name for an unterrifying cat. <laughs> no. <laughs> she's like um, such a I don't bother but don't bother me kind of cat. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for it, how do you feel the movie stacks up to the book? Well, the movies, because they actually did two of them. And, oh, yeah, um, yeah, four. <laughs> take, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, if you really... I was talking about the new ones. and yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen the older ones. Um, well, you're not missing out much. There's yeah, that's what I've CGI. heard. Yeah. Um, the only thing is that the guy from The Waltons mm -hmm. is the lead. Really? Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> but... Tom Boy. Um, Tom Boy. Yeah. He's, he's the lead in that film. Uh, that so the real, the real difference, um, is that like the newer ones, the two movies really put forward that like it happened in the eighties and it's like present day, kind of like, uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. And in the book, it's like, it happened in the fifties and it's like all the adults are like in the eighties, I believe. Well, like, okay, I can see why so they did that exactly like it's, like... they're trying to get to a newer audience, but mm -hmm. I feel like it really took away from a lot of the original like civil rights movements and stuff because the uh oh what's his name he was the black character uh I haven't read it since deployment. The guy who's into the history of Yeah, exactly. Dairy, right? Yeah. That guy. Okay. Exactly. So the librarian. Yeah. He's a really he's a really big big part in the uh book. Okay. 
and I appreciate it because like you start to get a semblance of like like what uh, race relations were like in the 50s for like uh, like black children and like black adults and stuff and it's like it's it's more eye opening because you think that author tapped into that pretty well yeah because with Stephen King he always writes his characters very well they're very uh, grounded in their own world and I think he did he he made a really good approach with uh, with that just because like I, I I found myself more attached to this character because you're like oh okay like um, there's this whole uh, KKK like um, not uh not well it's not even underground it's like it's prevalent everywhere oh, okay. so like um there's this like his father apparently was in the army or the national guard or something like that and they ended up starting their own like uh bar uh out in the middle of nowhere for like you know just uh black guys and girls and they end up you know having a couple of like uh white guys and girls show up too but like the white supremacy guys are like Oh fuck that! Because mm. you know we hate black people, and this I'm like, not in the film. no, it wasn't. I thought they really missed out on a huge point in the in the book that could have like really pushed it forward. And I was yeah. like, why the hell is this not in there? Especially in like our day and age with yeah. all this stuff that's going on right now. Yeah. It's like, wow, you could have like really said something, but I think they were just more afraid to do it well, because I don't know if they well, were afraid to do it because maybe like it is. It gets what they did in the second film mm -hmm. is. Because I didn't understand, I had to rewatch the first film, the newer. This is the newer version. Mm -hmm. I think that in the old version, the old viewing, the movie of it, yeah, with uh, Tim Curry as uh, it, yeah, that's also the other reason why you watch it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they did. I think they had they they played on that racism card, yeah, in it very well. For the new one, they played to I think the LGBTQIA yeah. community. I didn't realize that they did that until the second film. How so? So the very beginning opening, where you have the uh, two guys at the at the uh, carnival. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. whole scene, and then, okay, so like maybe that's just how you open the movie, right? Yeah, and is you find out that it is back, right? Yeah. But then, like, to find out that one of the char lead characters. Mm -hmm. has a crush on another. Yeah. And then that's why it all circles back around at the end. It, you know, spoiler alert. But, yeah. like, the thing is, is, like, I went there and went, oh, my God, I don't recall that in the old version. Yeah. But I definitely see why they played it to this audience. Yeah. You to know? this uh, younger generation. Because it's not so much of, like, because, uh, now, mind you, I know I'm older than you, but, like, in the early 2000s, all the way up to, I think, about 2010, mm -hmm. it was all about acceptance. And nowadays, I feel like from 2010 to now, it's about um, not so much educating, but like uh, making that, it's not just about acceptance anymore, it's like understanding. Like trying to trying to appeal to the other side or like well, it's already been done yeah if you think about it with shows like queer eye for a straight guy yeah they've already appealed so much to that gap yeah correct? um even though we all know it's reality television that's fake as fuck but what i'm saying is yeah. like <laughs> i've done a lot of reality tv binging yeah like 90 day fiance yeah i i have i can't get into any reality tvs after the last like <sighs> Okay, series, yeah, but... but Tiger King was actually, for me, it was very entertaining because it's one of those characters that you don't, you think you'd like hear about in a book somewhere, yeah. but this dude is just walking around. That dude, his zoo was exactly an hour away from where I lived. Mm. I had no idea that Tiger King was ever around. Really? I lived in Moore, Oklahoma. <laughs> I graduated in Moore, Oklahoma. Now, let me mind you this. Oklahoma City's in the center. Yeah. Moore is just south of that. About 30 minutes later is Norman, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. About 30 minutes to an hour later is Tiger King. Oh, wow. I had no idea this guy even existed. <laughs> I had no idea that this guy even ran for governor. Okay? Wow. Or even yeah. president. No idea. 
who this guy was. And I was like, I'm sitting here watching on the on the screen, and I'm just like this. On the first episode, I literally had to stop it in the first five minutes. Yeah. That's how much like was so compact in that into that show. Um, but yeah, like with the again, like with it, the LGBTQIA uh, community, I didn't realize that in the first film that that seed was planted and mm. they made it grow. Like they were like, this is the plant that grew from that last film. Yeah. And at the very back end of the film, this is how it turned out. Yeah. You know, this is the repercussions of some of these actions that these characters put themselves through. Yeah. And I feel like they did that, but with the race card. In the older the ones. Older one. Yeah. So maybe that's where you're, maybe you should try watching the first See, film. Both of them come up in the book. Because, uh, oh, really? yeah, both that. of them come up in the book, oh, uh, because, yeah, like it, he, yeah, that's what I love about Stephen King. It, okay. There is some very dicey things in that book where you're like, okay, um, he was clearly on a couple drugs when he wrote it, but and it's like, the lamp is killing you. <laughs> <laughs> not even like that. It's like, I don't like it, I, I had to put the book down because I didn't want to read what he was saying because it was just so uncomfortable. What do you mean? Like, like so there's like, this... Are there N-words involved? No, no, no. Well, yes, the, that's very prevalent in the whole book, okay. but, like, it, it gets... It's not it's not used like Quentin Tarantino does it, okay, but it's yeah. more, like, you, you get a feel for the characters because of, like, the racism that they output. Uh -huh. And um, so it's not it's not, like, badly used. It's used pretty well, I think. Um, but what, what becomes like really prevalent throughout the book is that like, like in the middle there, like, how do I put this? He basically takes everything. He takes all these different themes and like, um, uh, kind of like existentialism, mm -hmm. racism, mm -hmm. um, uh, fear and like just terror mm -hmm. at its base core. Like, what is it? Like, what is it? Mm -hmm. And it ends up being this crazy uh, entity from another planet mm -hmm. that feeds off of the terror that it gets. Mm -hmm. So it takes different um, forms, forms right? And one of the more tamer parts mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, in the newer one, uh, one of the kids with the inhaler, he, um, he ends up... Uh, in this kind of like train yard where all these hobos are at. And um, this one that had syphilis like heavy, uh, like uh, ended up having like no nose, having like all of his like face kind of like coming off. And it was like late stage syphilis to where like all these different parts of his fingers and stuff were falling off. And this wasn't it. This wasn't the monster or anything. It was this hobo, right? And he's just walking past and he goes, hey kid, I'll jerk you off for a dime. I'll, I'll suck you off right now. And he's like, no, I'm good, sir. I'm, I'm going to keep going. On, so and he's, he's a like, kid. he's, a, he's he like 10. To like the adult version of this. No, he's, oh he's God. like 10 years old. And like, um, this hobo like ends up, you, you know what? I, I'll just do it for free. And he starts running after him and the kid has to fucking book it. Cause he's like, oh my god, this hobo's trying to like rape me or whatever. And I'm sitting there like, holy so shit. Escalated from like this hobo with. Gonorrhea syphilitis. Yeah. Wanting to suck this kid off for money. Yeah. To I'll I'll do it for free. And I'm just gonna rape you. Like, yeah, exactly. Oh my god. And he like and in it it, it talks about oh how he's god. like like jerking himself off while he's running at him and I'm like holy shit that's actually terrifying but that's like me for out. yeah for the for the kid that thing starts popping up whenever it comes around because it's like a prevalent memory within his head. So it's like almost twice as worse whenever it does it because it knows that it like that's one of his like worst memories. And so it plays on that. And that's what I really enjoy about the book because it's like, it's just such a very uncomfortable, but like, you're like, holy shit. Like if that happened in real life and no one said anything about it, like that person would walk around with so many different fears and like inhibitions about Not things. Not that, but like the aftermath. Exactly. Of this character having to live with not only the first trauma, mm -hmm. but the second trauma, fighting against it. Yeah, 
and like overcoming that initial yeah. fear as a kid and they don't really make it through the first time yeah. that's why they come back i'm thinking of like i have a fear of snakes yeah i've never been bitten by a snake uh i've only been around a snake one time in my passing like in a home yeah as a pet um not mine but for god's sakes i can only imagine if something harry potter style escalated to such an extent like a basilisk kind of thing yeah oh that Ooh. like like those 22 foot pythons in the amazon <laughs> and shit <laughs> so like i've got this fear of the snake for no fucking reason basilisk comes around and now I'm having to fight over two fears because the basilisk came over, came with, came from the snake fear. Oh yeah. gosh, no. And that's why, uh... No, I'd just be a permanent oh. uh, patient at Promises in Texas or... or yeah. And that is. that's why, like, you know, the, uh, the Jewish kid in the very first movie mm -hmm. doesn't come up in the next one because mm. he, he, he hears the call yeah. and ends up, like, taking his own life. Right. Because he cannot face it he doesn't want to face it right. he's not going to yeah and like that's that happens almost immediately within the book because the stories are told side by side basically oh, yeah, so no, like you've true. got you've got like why they're coming back so he he blends it so perfectly well like these two branching timelines mm -hmm. but like they're all connected to dairy and it just the way that he like uh, writes about it I just get like I, I get goosebumps because I'm like he really either planned this out or he just I, I don't understand how he could plan out both of them like that like I know it had to take a, a an immense amount of effort an immense amount of effort because it's like it's such a long story yeah you know and you're but it's so it good chronologically but also you're now taking that timeline and running them side by side. Yeah. And making it go. Yeah, and he's not even like like a very like a frilly off author, you know. He's not trying to uh he he doesn't use a lot of like heavy um imagery. Imagery, right? Yeah, cuz uh reading Memoirs of a Geisha last year, mm -hmm. uh I could tell you right now like it was a that I'm not a strong reader. Yeah. But I'm better than what I was before. My thing is, is that with that book, as beautiful as a book it is, as beautiful of a, I watched the movie first. Yeah. Another, this is another one of those books. That oh, okay. I <laughs> saw the movie first before I watched, read the book. Uh, there's literally a page dedicated to what the front door looks like. That's kind of like George R. R. Martin. Mm -hmm. He goes on for like two pages talking about a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like like this feast or something and you're like your mouth is watering at the end but you're like man i'm really hungry now i don't even want to read the book i'm gonna go make some food instead yeah and the dragons are coming don't worry yeah, about that they're exactly coming. they're coming yeah. but like the really thing that i like about stephen king is that his imagery is put in such a way where he just places the image in your head and your imagination does, does the rest oh. and i really like that about that author because i feel like rick Riordan does that really well with his uh, percy jackson series mm -hmm. I, I never read any of his newer stuff but mm -hmm. as a kid i remembered not liking to read a bunch of stuff that's so you know like yes. flowery um uh, like where it's just imagery heavy mm -hmm. it's like this is what's happening this is where it's at this is this this is that mm -hmm. and like i tried to read robert pattinson mm -hmm. And I find him to be the driest fiction writer in the known universe. First fictional book that I actually read all the way through, understood, and finished was Lemony Snicket's oh. series of unfortunate events. Yeah. Which is just as entertaining, and now that I'm watching it on Netflix, mm -hmm. just as entertaining as the books were when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I I read those when I was a kid. I don't remember them to, in the slightest, but I remember always being like, oh, yeah, I do like that. Yeah. Um, I got all the way up to, uh, one of them had to deal with the elevator, uh, and I read that one, but then, like, that was, like, me all caught up. Yeah. I See, mean, I, I plowed right through that series Yeah. Uh, in eighth grade uh, when they were coming out, and I think he was just about to end with the book called The End. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think at that point, the Jim Carrey version 
of the movie came out, and I went to go watch it. Oh yeah, that. Oh yeah. What a oh. horrible adaptation. Yeah. Oh. I remember God. not liking it. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't Jim Carrey. Mm-mm. No, he's it a was great. Just quite simply, the script. Yeah. Because it had all three books, the first three books into one film. That's kind of like how they did uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender stuff. Really? Yeah. So, you know. That's. Like, bleh. The, the, That's the worst that? movie M- I ever watched. M. Night Shyamalan? Sh- M. Night Shyamalan? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's done some great right. stuff. Yeah, I like his village, stuff. Village, yeah. Sense, stick to oh, show. and uh, what? The superhero ones. The. Uh, uh, oh, what? Ones. Yeah, like the pseudo superhero ones. It's like. Uh, oh, my God. I can't even remember. I know it's Glass is the recent one. Um, it's not like Unstoppable. It's like a. Huh? Did he do Lucy? Lucy? No, 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 no not no, that one. Not not, that's that's the one with the drug. Um, no, it's um, it's the guy with multiple personality disorder. Oh, and I for- Split. Split. Yeah, he did <laughs> oh Glass God. Split, and there was a first one that he did in like 2003, mm-hmm. like 10 years before this thing. But it's like, it builds on the uh, the uh, the concept of like, what if superheroes were real? What yeah. would it look like if these things like actually were like, like these people were actually out there? Would yeah. it be like, oh, you know, I like uh, Bruce Willis is the main character in the first one, and I loved it because I watched it out on deployment. Mm-hmm. And you know how you you know just start trading movies and try to get everything that you can to just, like actually see. You're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, like uh, you've got this, you got this, and I, I watched Split first, and then I saw. In the very end credits was him, and he's like, oh. Like, I was like, wait, what is this? Like, why is this even relevant? And I yeah. learned from, like, I think I learned from, like, Olan or somebody else that there was a previous movie. Mm. And I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> so I go back and watch it, and apparently Bruce Willis's character is, like, super strong. And he is the only one to survive this train crash in the very beginning. Uh, um that uh, kills everyone on board. Mm -hmm. He walks out with no scratches, Mm. no nothing. And they're like, what the hell is some miracle, right? But he starts thinking about it and he's like, I've never, even in the car crashes that I've been in, um, he he realizes that like I've never like broken anything, I've never done anything. The only thing that I've worried, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, "How, how strong am I? So, like, him and his kid go down into uh, the basement, right? And there's this whole scene where he's just, like, putting weight up on a bar, and he just bench presses it, no problem. And he's like, the hell? And he's like, hey, put put on more. And the kid goes, grabs more plates, puts them on, and he keeps going, and he keeps going. And he goes, more. And he goes, Dad, that's all we have. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what the hell? And the kid starts believing that he's, like, a superhero, right? And he starts making a... Uh, he, he kind of starts doing like these like secret vig- vigilante kind of stuff, like mm-hmm. saving people, mm-hmm. and um, he he notices that uh, like he doesn't really believe it too much, mm-hmm. but he gets in uh, contact with um, Samuel L. Jackson's character, mm. and he's and the one. You talk to him, he's the complete you're opposite. It. Yeah. Oh. So. Okay. Everything in his body is like breakable. That's oh, that's why it's like glass. Okay. So like. Oh, he's a glass guy. Exactly. So like, if he falls, he can break his entire everything, <laughs> and uh, so he's really interested in this, and he's like really into comic books, and it's just, it's just so interesting to see how superheroes could work in real life because it's subtle. It's the complete opposite of a Marvel movie where it's like big over the top action. It's like these yeah. subtle things where you're like, whoa, this guy's mysterious and weird. Yeah. But that's when like Split comes into the thing mm-hmm. where it's like he, there's this deep monster that transforms him into somebody can, that can literally like pull apart iron bars. Mm. And I just found that crazy. And it all kind of culminates into glass, which okay. I, I don't want to spoil anything yeah, because. Yeah. Those are great movies, but right. like they're not for everybody. Oh really? Yeah. That's interesting. Because like I tried to get like Olan and a couple other people into it, mm-hmm. and they were just like, mm, mm. 
they're like, I don't like those movies. There's not enough action. I was like, it's like, I don't, it's the nuance. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it's yeah. like, that. it's not the action. It's the nuance with it. It's like, how far can you go before this is like, oh yeah, he's a total superhero. Or it's like, is he really a superhero? Yeah. You get to make up your own decision about yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Right? So That's it makes you that, think. Like, the same director can not only do these really great films, do this one really sucky one. Yeah. And then all these other ones are like, oh, actually, he like found a niche again. Yeah, you know? exactly. Because he did, uh, he did a couple, of, uh, did he do like a monster movie once? Um, maybe I'm confusing him with somebody else. But yeah, like uh, what he was saying about Avatar, what a horrible film. Awful. Worst, horrible film. worst thing I ever watched. To, like you have this, on. like yeah, you have these back reference of like all. Why in the world would you change his name to Ang instead of Ang? You know it's Ang. Why it's you gotta Aang. be Ang? Oh, you know what? Maybe because the person who uh, they hired to say the name Ang. Yeah. Because like, I find myself elongating and shortening A's or O's. Yeah. That probably should not. <laughs> yeah, but the whole the whole cast does it. I'm like, okay, oh, they. No. they all it, have I think they were it. really trying to go for like the Asian influences, but it's like because everything within Avatar: The Last Airbender is very. Uh, even I know it's Aang, and I've never even seen an episode. Yeah, it's like, so to explain it, it's like everything's very like Asian influence mm-hmm. style. So like it's like. A lot of the dresses and a lot of like how they uh, maneuver and a lot of their martial arts mm-hmm. are based upon like Asian uh, influences. So like, yeah, like I think the, like Earth, the wire foo kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like Earth is like a very uh, like a Chinese kind of um, built society, mm-hmm. and like the uh, the Fire Nation's built upon like kind of like a historic like old World War Two Japanese style of uh, like aggression mm-hmm. and. The coolest thing about the airbenders is they're kind of like the Tibetan monks of the entire world. So okay. they're all living in peace and prosperity up in the mountains, just blowing air everywhere. Yeah. And then like the water tribe is one that I really liked because it's like north and south mm-hmm. and they focus a lot on duality, but it's kind of like they're they're almost like Native Americans in a weird way with their culture. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what they were trying to tap into, but it was so it was done so bad that like, you know, you're just kind of like what in the world? Like, why would you, why would you change something if it's already that good? You know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. If you have already heard, there is a new album by myself, Sean Graves. This album's called The Other Side. It can be heard on iTunes, Amazon, Deezer, and all the digital outlets that are out there. And if you enjoy listening to this podcast, there will be plenty more. Of course, obviously, we're constantly growing our content and how we record. So the more you listen, the better off we're going to get in the future. So keep on listening for the second half. Yeah, I've met Christmas. Um, I've met I've met two Christmases. And I was like, (laughs) I remember uh, she was one of the nurses. I had broken my foot. And she comes up, and I'm like, you're the second Christmas I've ever met. And she's like, there's more of me? And I was like, yeah. Like, I've met another Christmas. And she's like, I hate my dad. I go by Chris most of the time, but she's (laughs) like, I hate my father. I'm I'm born on Christmas, and he was drunk as fuck, and he got the, he got, like, the paper or whatever, and didn't know, like, apparently didn't even, like, realize that he was, yeah, he thought it was just, like, Christmas. Like yes, it's Christmas today. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. Well, that's almost like my kind of like my friend. His name is Justin Case. Justin Case Johnson. And I'm like, your dad. I love you. Your dad. I know it was your dad because I've met your mom. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't do that. But like, just she was probably doped up on all the drugs from just giving birth, and she didn't know yeah. any better what was going on. She was like, but, "Just in case, that sounds great." Yeah, he's like, "All right, yeah, fine." But like, the thing, the thing that I lo- love about him is that he owns it. He yeah. owns it really well because uh, yeah. his favorite, his favorite pickup line to use is, "Hi, I'm Justin Case Johnson. Just in case you need some Johnson." Oh my. And yes, it, there's there's either the girls that are like, "What." 
or the other girls that just bust out laughing. Right. I'm like, like, wow, that's yeah. that's nice, you know, because uh, once you, when I feel like once you own something like that, it, and it really becomes a part of you, yeah. no one can really take it away from no. you. No. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which goes like right back to like loving or hating your voice. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like once know. you own it, it it doesn't even become a problem. Absolutely, and that's where I think like again like podcasting. Um, narrating and doing audiobooks really helped me yeah. with that growth. But then I get behind my music and I'm like this. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah, here we go again. <laughs> it's like um, now uh, versus like when I was younger, yeah. I would, uh, I, I had a very clean tone, mm-hmm. very clean, where it was just kind of, uh, anytime I sang it, you know, it was kind of like, I wouldn't say poppy because I don't really make a lot of pop music. Me neither. But um, I could try with all my might; it'll never turn out pop. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't it's some life. <laughs> it's just like now I find it easier to have a little bit of rasp in like yeah. my voice, so I I like to use that a lot because I know that my inflection is going to be a little bit better whenever I have a little bit of distortion in the back of my throat, just because it's like I can hit the notes a little bit better, but it's not like. I'm trying to force it out. Mm-hmm. It's more like, it's like I find that note distorted a little bit, and then I kind of like now that I know where the distortion's at, I can like, you know, Lower match pitch, that. you know, actually get the notes that I want out. Yeah. And I'm not entirely sure why, but it feels like I have more control at that point. Mm-hmm. It's like I can still sing really high and really clean, mm-hmm. but I feel like that only works on a couple of different levels. Mm-hmm. You know, a couple of different songs. Yeah, like an instrument. Like, yeah, exactly. It only you can only use it for its intended purposes mm-hmm. because I could not imagine any other instrument at the beginning of the Rite of Spring playing da 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 da. Yeah, that's a bassoon. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a clarinet, but it's a bassoon. Yeah, and that's what pissed everyone off <laughs> at the very beginning of it when it was first heard. Really? Absolutely. Because. Of the bassoon? Yeah. Why? There was actually a critic sitting right in front of Igor Stravinsky at opening day. And the critic said, what is that damn sound? And Igor goes, it's a bassoon. <laughs> and the guy in front of him, this is the, the quote of the, of, the, of the whole play. If that's a bassoon, then I'm a buffoon. He gets up and walks away. Oh, this my God. This critic was so, so involved with the music world. That because he left, everyone else was freaking the fuck out. And so everyone else starts, you know, freaking out, going like, oh, this place sucks, oh, this place sucks, oh, this place sucks, you know? Yeah, because everyone wanted to jump on the bandwagon. Because everyone wanted Firebird. Oh, his original work. His original work. Yeah. He had already done Firework, where everything's in the air, there's all these beautiful tones. He wanted something down on the ground. Mm. And... While people are freaking out because of this one critic and his one explanation, exclamation of, if that's a bassoon, then I'm a buffoon, Igor gets up and he's like, well, damn you all. And he goes and he tries to shut the play down. Yeah. Wow. And he didn't reopen until the next day. Huh. And then he actually had a better audience. Yeah. Some yeah. people that were going to at least listen to it instead yeah. of being like, oh, I don't like this intro. Oh, what? Like, yeah. You know? <sighs> that's just, that's, that's crazy to me that you can be that critical about something yeah. just hearing i mean one very high registered bassoon yeah it's like yeah. why why is that a problem but you can only hear that timbre i could not imagine a clarinet playing that Mm-mm. no it doesn't have the uh it doesn't have the depth the the rasp that mm, it's not raspy but it's like it's got it's screeching so much cuz that's such a high register yeah. for that machine that if you gave it to a machine that that's normal, it's not. It's that energy is not in there. That the person behind it that's putting the air through. I feel, I feel like not it's feeling that. yeah. I feel like it's just too pitchy of mm-hmm. an instrument. Um, just because I, I actually used to play the clarinet uh, back in middle school, mm-hmm. and I hated that thing. I hated it <laughs> so much because like. Like, I was first chair for a little while, and then I got moved down to third chair, and then I just hated the instrument. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> I'm yeah. good. I don't want to be a clarinet player. I don't want to be Squidward. 
Oh my gosh. And so I just gave up. I didn't even think about Squidward. Uh, But I tried playing the clarinet Mm -hmm. when I was a kid too. Well, before I found Theremin. But, like, I hated the part that, like, it literally has to be, like, your esophagus. Yeah. And I was like, that's so immobile. Yeah, you feel, you're just like, you're so done up. You're just like, I'm I'm playing the clarinet. And it's very proper. Yeah, (laughs) one or two buttons at a time, you know? Uh, As opposed to, like, Theremin, I feel like Theremin really released me from that when I tried playing it, playing Mm -hmm. the clarinet for a second, like, literally a second. As soon as I felt like I was having a stick up my back, I was like, this isn't comfortable, this is not meant for me. Um, Theremin, on the other hand, you can play it sitting, you can play it standing. Yeah. And I can always have that really beautiful tone. Mm Mm-hmm. That upper register tone, those mids, and that bass line down there, too. Yeah. And that's what I loved about it. Okay. Know? So as soon as, like, I came into the music uh, hall at the high school, and I was like, yeah, I want to play the theremin, they were like... Uh... That sounds really cool. Yeah. And I was like, yes! You know, like, they were so excited about it. And it was like, as long as you actually play, like, a real instrument, like... Okay, now we gotta get into a discussion about what a real instrument. Yeah, exactly. it's like. <laughs> so I'm not playing the Coca Cola bottles. Yeah. But. Yeah. See that. Uh, there's obvious instruments. Yeah. There's obvious, but every single instrument is just based on a noise that it makes. Yeah. Like that's why you know those viral videos of how like people you know like basically like make coke bottles and like fill them with different levels of liquid and it yeah, yeah, puts yeah. out the note and mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. and like some guys just literally hit in a box and it becomes like way more popular it's because it's you know it's something that they know it's something that they're familiar with the noises but at the same time or the notes are very familiar uh, at the same time you can make that with anything mm-hmm. so i think oh yeah like that guitar with the uh rubber bands and the uh, mm-hmm. uh tissue box oh yeah exactly. yeah like that kind of thing where it'd be like real really yeah it's like that's and i mean that's I an instrument or <laughs> synthesizers and i'm like <sighs> yeah <laughs> i'm relevant too i guess exactly my gosh my question is um what projects do you have in the future um so getting down to the business i've actually okay so since we already went off topic with it, I'll kind of, this is kind of like how I'm doing my projects yeah. is, you know, I'm doing my, my physical project was, is like my body. I'm trying to get back in shape. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do an hour of cardio. I want, my project is uh, by the end of the year to be able to speak Spanish, yeah. you know, um, I'm also learning how to code and, oh, cool. uh, I'm, I'm still trying to decide if I want to continue learning C++ or if I want to just move over to Python because I know Python will probably be a a little bit more, um, uh, it's going to be more useful within like the field that I'm trying to go into, which is like medical stuff. And what are the two differences? If you could sum that up. Um, so from, I've heard of that. Yeah. So the, the universal stuff that we all see every day, isn't it? Well, so Python would be more universal in oh. a sense that like um, it's a lot of web development. C plus plus is stuff like um, that, you know, like uh, Xboxes use um, mm-hmm. that uh, most video games use because it's such a it's a deeper language. So you're okay. gonna be able to have a lot more um, room to play with. Yeah, a lot more room to do more complex tasks. Mm-hmm. Whereas Python's very direct and easy to flow. Um, cause I learned, I learned a little bit of Python, uh, when I got out of high school, uh, whenever I dropped out cause I wanted to teach myself stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never really went anywhere with it cause I didn't really like you use, if you don't use it, you lose it. Right. right. So yeah. now it's like, okay, well I want to build a couple of games. Right. And I realized that I wanted to do coding, uh, for two reasons. One, cause I wanted to make something I enjoy. And uh, two, it's going to be a useful skill anywhere that I go, especially in this day and age. Everything's digital. Yeah, you, you, if you can way. make your own app to do the things that you need it to do, uh, you're going to get a lot more done. Mm-hmm. And so I also am trying to learn how to use uh, Unreal Engine 4 so oh, that I can cool. like start building games that I want to. 
Yeah. And um, that's like seriously like jumping from like I feel to me it's like jumping from uh, uh, audacity to logic and never having that base. Yeah. Or actually, I didn't even start with audacity. I don't know if you know of like Sony Acid Planet, Acid Pro. I've heard of Acid Pro. Okay, so that's actually where my platform is from when it comes to production. Yeah, so that's your original platform. That's my OG. Okay. I still have it upstairs in the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. In a Dell Studio computer that Dell's not even a com- I don't even think Dell's a company. Oh, they, they, they are. I have they are. I have one of their laptops. Okay. They, they're towers mm-hmm. from back in 07, still running. Oh, God. Yeah. That's an old ass computer now. Yeah, it doesn't even have HDMI. That wasn't a thing. Damn. Yeah. It was That's the old, old pip. Not oh, yeah. Connectors for the screen. Oh. Anyway, Oof. in that one machine, it was dedicated to just Acid. Yeah. Pro. Now I'm on Logic. Mm-hmm. But there were steps in between to get there. Yeah, definitely. And I would feel like going to Unreal Engine is like jumping right into like logic and having absolutely no idea exactly how but, even mastering is concerned see that's um i like doing that more yeah. because um basically i bought a 600 hundred dollar guitar mm-hmm. not this one over there um but as my first guitar right and the first one that i did have was an old like old bucket basically i called it the blue bucket because that's what i used to play on i'm like i hate this thing it doesn't sound good i have to tune it all the time and like it it really desensitized me it 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 pushed me away from learning guitar at all yeah i was like well that sucks and then i eventually was just like no i want a good guitar i want to play something and get good at it yeah and actually get like a reward out of it like if you have a nice sounding guitar or even an instrument of any type and you uh, learn it mm-hmm. and you or like you learn a program because I did the same thing with Ableton mm-hmm. like oh, I'd, yeah, yeah, I'd never I had never done anything mm-hmm. but my friend had a free copy of Ableton really? was like here you go like try yeah. it and I'm like okay and it, it started to flow a lot better I started to figure things out but it took a long ass time because it was more complicated than what logic was like as soon as I touched Ableton and I saw logic I was like Oh, I kind of get this. Or like when I saw Fruity Loops, I I still don't like Fruity Loops, but at the same time, it's like. I know a lot of people who use that. So yeah, and I see I see why it's good. That fr- I, and yeah, I see it too. But I also see why Acid Pro mm. doesn't work. Yeah, as, yeah, like as a platform. As a platform, because I used it when it's like Sony PlayStation. Mm-hmm. You hear Sony, you think. CD cassettes, CD yeah. players. You think PlayStation? Yeah, you think, of course. Uh, well, obviously there are media companies, so this is the machine that they probably use for their medium. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm not good at just that program, but I'll no. tell you what. Compared to where I was in the early 2000s, mm-hmm. like again, middle school, high school, when I started writing music, just like you, and composing and producing. Yeah. Night and day today. Yeah. And you can hear that online. Oh, yeah. definitely. Like, so, um, I, I didn't have any, like, real instruments, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I was, you know, just messing around with Ableton, and I was trying to figure out, like, how to write anything, and I started learning how to write the MIDI keyboards, and that was, like, all I ever did, and I would add in sounds afterwards, right? Yeah. And then whenever I moved up to Nashville and started talking to my friends that, you know, produce music, mm-hmm. like, live, it was a completely different, like, experience. I was like, holy shit, this is actually how it works? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like Ableton Live. Oh. <laughs> it's like it, it made, you know, playing something and just putting it onto, like, an actual track so much easier. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, well, I, I started to get it, and... um now it's the only thing I use and it's the only thing I really enjoy um, uh, production wise mm-hmm. because I mean like I could do Fruity Loops but I've never liked how many like tabs always open I'm like I always yeah. have to like sift through everything and I'm like Ugh. Yeah. I like having it kind of just laid out and I know where everything is and mm-hmm. I guess that really goes with um, 
learning anything. So that's why I feel like if I jump into, you know, Unreal Engine and start learning a uh, different code, um, I know C++ will help me with the game development side mm -hmm. of things that I want to do, right. but I know that Python's going to be an easier starting language mm -hmm. and that it's, uh, it it's like, more universal. Is it like playing Duolingo with Python and then using Rosetta Stone for C++? Um, yes, but I would say, I would say it's more like using like Duolingo versus Pimser. You ever heard oh, of Pimser? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, like Python's gonna get you started speaking faster. Mm -hmm. uh, Duolingo is gonna give you a broader knowledge base and mm -hmm. use that more complex uh, syntax, yeah. syntax, right? So it's like you're gonna understand the language a little bit more, but you're not gonna be able to speak it as fast as you can with Pimser. Right. So I was like, oh, okay. Okay. So. So video games, physical body, what else is like planned for the future? Um, so we've got, you know, physical, Spanish, um, oh, yeah. coding, yeah. Uh, games, or learning how to make a game, and uh, basically getting myself ready, uh, learning uh, algebra again, because yeah. uh, I'm, I'm going to be going into, well. you know, college after this next year's up, yeah. and I definitely want to be good at algebra again. Yeah. Oh, I was never good at it, so it's always been a really bad thing. I was more, honestly, it's crazy. I'm really good at statistics. Mm -hmm. but the only reason why is because the formulas are always the same. The numbers are always plugged in the same spots. Mm -hmm. It always outputs the same. It, it, it doesn't fuck up. Yeah. If you know what you're doing. Algebra, on the other hand, I feel it's like, uh, Devin has five apples. Sean has three chocolate bars how many oranges does the next door neighbor have <laughs> it's like and, what? right but you also need to understand that Devin drove 30 minutes sean was stagnant michelle's house is 45 minutes in a whole yeah. other direction how long will it take Devin to deliver the apples <laughs> yeah it's like okay <laughs> to Safeway, which was not even a part of the whole storyline in the first place yeah to what end i don't give a shit yeah, that's why. That's why I also like physics geometry. and chemistry. Yeah, and geometry like, is just so much simpler. Here see, is a space. Measure yeah. the fuck out. Yeah. yeah. You just got to remember the uh, the actual yeah. names of it in the formulas, yeah. and that's They're a lot easier. There. Like algebra, I was never good at. I I could never really understand because I always felt like whenever I went up to the teacher, mm -hmm. my algebra teachers especially always made me feel stupid. Yeah. And like I didn't like that. I, I would always come up and be like, uh, "Wait, I don't really understand this." And he's like, "You weren't paying attention." I was like, "I okay. You ever I try to? Like <laughs> you ever try to listen to someone speak Spanish really slowly? Does it help? No. no. <laughs> not even in my uh, first language. It does not help. Yeah. If you don't know what you're saying. Exactly. You know. It's like, like what? Yeah. It's like I still don't understand what any of this is. If I was just to say via gets. Mm hmm It's like You just heard two words. Gibberish? <laughs> How are you? Yeah. It's like oh But those were two words. Yeah. Not three words in the English. Yeah. So how would you have known? It sounded like one word to me because that, yeah. I I can't uh, see, I'm getting to the point in Spanish where I can actually like differentiate a lot of the words and I know a lot of the colors, but like the grammar um, always throws me off because mm. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, like, right. What is he the saying? vowel before the yeah. noun. Yeah. I'm like, that makes no you sense. Know, crazy enough about Spanish is that I took a Latin class in mm. high school. Because so did I. I had this. Cra <laughs> Why did you take Latin? Because I was a very little pretentious fuck. Oh, <laughs> and that like, was it? <laughs> no, that wasn't the only thing. It was like, it's like. I want to learn something that nobody else is learning, and it's a dead language, and I can speak it to people that know Latin. And I was like, "Oh, that's gonna make me seem smart." And I'm like, now, now thinking about it, like as like a what? I was like 15. I was like, that's some cringy ass like kid stuff that I don't like about who yeah. I was then. And I remember I did a lot of soul searching after that because I hated Latin. Me too. I hated <laughs> Latin. Um, I hated the final that I took for Latin class. Um, the only reason why, I wasn't pretentious, but what I was trying to do was I was trying to learn more 
English. Mm. And just starting from the base of the romantic language. Exactly. Yeah. That was my goal. And I told the teacher that. I said, I'm in remedial English classes still mm. as a senior. Don't know why. Um, but uh, the reason why I'm here is because I've been told that the basis of our language is not just Germanic, but also Latin. Yeah. So since I know the first part, I don't know the latter. Help me understand. Yeah. Now as an adult, the only benefits I've got is that when someone says like A something, if the word if the letter A is in front of a word, it mm-hmm. means not. It means not? Yes. In like asymmetric. Oh, okay, I see what not you're saying. Symmetric. Yeah. <laughs> like uh arrhythmia, not yeah. rhythmic. Yeah. So those little tricks are still in my head. Yeah. But it hasn't earned me a dollar. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, exactly. That like, like that. I, I was always really good at it, um, like for comprehension's sake, because I was really good at English. Yeah. And um, it was uh, I did a lot of reading. Um, it's kind of weird. I read nothing but fiction up until about seventh grade, mm. and then from seventh grade until I was about twenty. 21 years old, I read nothing but nonfiction. Mm. And so the the real time that I started actually getting back into fiction books was on deployment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that was a year ago. Which is like, funny because, like, I got into nonfiction. Oh, I was really? reading biographies of people. Oh, okay. So Julia Child, Lev Thurman, yeah. um, and uh, Carrie Fisher. Yeah. Randomly. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I read one of her, uh, her diaries that she published. Uh... Yeah, uh, it was that, I get that, like, because I used to read fictions. Yeah. Now I read non-fictions. Yeah, it's... Now I'm reading somebody's lectures. Yeah, I think fun. that's, I think that's why I, um, I was really good at, um, comprehension mm-hmm. as a, uh, as a high schooler, just because I stopped reading, uh, fiction, and mm-hmm. non-fiction was such... It was laden with such heavy language that I was like constantly being like, oh, wait, what does this mean? Why is it similar to this word? Why does this do this? And yeah. I'm like, okay. And it really rounded out my ability to, you know, read English. Um, and that's a lot of the reason that I like liked writing was because of how direct and indirect you could be with it. Like mm-hmm. your, your writing is your own voice, except you're putting it to paper. Yeah. And what I hated about it was that what okay so what i loved and hated about it was that when you wrote something down you always realized how stupid you were <laughs> you're right, like you know professionals are not they're not good at first yeah exactly they got there it's a skill yeah yeah it's a muscle mm-hmm. uh yeah i can tell you like with publishing my first book it was hard mm-hmm. it wasn't like i did it just on deployment there was actually like a year behind that yeah where i did the research development put it all together and then i actually had like a uh, composition book with all my notes yeah and then just blurted it all out onto a word document yeah and then had it edited uh like numerous times and then was like okay i think we're there yeah <laughs> no. uh, it's a heavy process and the thing is is like my my goal in life was to become so much better at English but what I did know what the thing that I am so glad my life has um has graced me with is that music as a language has Mm -hmm. never changed because if you read it on a scale which I've shown you before yeah I still have the paper in my car (laughs) no matter where you are in that space it's always the same tone Mm -hmm. for any instrument and that's what I love about it no. I feel like it's music, like super universal. Yeah, I feel like music is literally the universal language, and I just so happen to speak English. Yeah, with English speakers, you know, mm-hmm. um, and and German with German, and I might know like one little part of Latin if you just so happen to speak medical terms. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. It's like it's funny how much. Latin is in medicine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was a corpsman. I remember. Oh, you were. That's right. Oh my gosh. I remember having to flashcard certain words in my um, A school book. Yeah. 
because I could not remember the fuck what they meant. And I was like, oh yeah, aiming's not. <laughs> Did they still have that, uh, the A school in San Antonio? Yeah. Wow. That, I was the first class to go through that. Oh, really? So you were like the very first yeah, one to be 11. there. Wow. Yeah. I, I really like San Antonio. My, uh, yeah, me too. My ex, um, she lived down there, and um, I would always visit her uh, mm-hmm. whenever we went, uh, whenever she went to college at UTSA, mm-hmm. and I'd always go down there. And I remember, I remember seeing it one time, being like, "Oh, that's weird." It's like, why is it in Texas? I know the Navy, the Navy's in well, like Chicago. Well, Air Force Base was on the south side, right? Yeah, that's where my dad was stationed. Well, not stationed. Was he stationed? I know he worked there yeah. when I was a young boy. Um, okay. so I lived there for a year in San Antonio. Uh, to go back there many years later, and I was on the north side at yeah. Fort Sam Houston, it's an Air Force base. Mm-hmm. They shut down Lackland Air Force Base. Yeah. A lot of the contractors that worked there, because my dad became a contractor too, yeah. they were either going to Tinker, they were either A, going to lose their jobs, B, mm-hmm. move to Tinker, or C, move to Utah. Yeah. So being my dad, at the time, he was like, well, I'm either going to have one of these three options. Hopefully it's Utah, so I'm closer to the boys yeah. and my little brother, but he got Oklahoma City. Uh, so, not a bad gig, Tinker Air Force Base, yeah. but in... In them dropping Lackland Air Force Base, they mm-hmm. have Fort Sam Houston. Yeah. So Lackland is now the MAA school. Huh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Fort Sam Houston is the Corman A school now. Wow. Yeah. And it was a shit show back then. <laughs> it was a shit show. I mean, any any first iteration of something is definitely a, oh, a time man. to learn. <laughs> I mean, I, imagine me, Airman Schmuck, not even an Airman, Seaman Schmuckatelli. Oh, yeah. Seaman Schmuckatelli. And I was sitting here going like this, talking to a lieutenant like this. Sir, the curriculum here is fucked. Oh, my God. And he was like, okay, why? And I said, respectfully... What do you want me to learn? Yeah. Because it is not, at the time, I don't know how, all I, all I can say is, as far as my coworkers are concerned, if they're listening to this, <laughs> I respect you so much. Please don't kill me. Yeah. But what I do know is, from when I was there, that curriculum was so sketch. Yeah. Being in that situation, I was like, this could go one of two ways. I could either get kicked out. I just can't conform to this. Yeah. Because if this is how it's going to be, it's going to be a very hard five years. Because your first was year, that your initial contract was five years? Oh gosh. Because that first year is just learning. Yeah. So that next four years. Wait, how long? How long was your schooling for A school? So it was supposed to be six months, I think. Oh wow. Yeah. That's a lot longer than it is now. You would think it would be. Yeah. It's like three months because that's what I was looking in. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I mean, you also got C school. But I don't know if they usually take that afterwards. They usually do. Oh. They usually try. The thing is, is that like, they usually try to broaden you and then specialize you. Mm-hmm. And it's not just you; it's you and the dental side too. Oh yeah. Yeah. So w- were you dental? No. Oh no. No. Which which side did you? So I was supposed to be the general. Oh, the you're just side. the general corpsman. Side. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was. That's what I was coming in as. Um. So. They specialize you later on. I was still in the end part of the A school part. Okay. So they, I I mean, I could complain and complain and complain and complain and study, 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 study and have as much fun as I wanted at the same time. But at the end of the day, I was not getting it. Yeah. And I was like, I don't even trust myself. (laughs) (laughs) it's like i might kill somebody i'm not gonna just kill somebody i'm probably gonna kill myself too if i tried helping somebody like that's (laughs) you'd slip and just fall on the needle and just yeah oh oh, darn yeah like a like a carol burnett sketch um a homicide and a suicide wrapped into one thing (laughs) (laughs) but uh i was just like what can i do just get out and they were like just fail give Mm. us a reason to kick you out yeah and so i did 
And then they were like, what do you want to be? And I was like, what's optional? And they said, seaman, fireman, airman. I said... Oh, so they threw you right into the PAC program. Yeah. And that's how I got here today. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes a lot. It took like a yeah. three-month detour to get there, but whatever. Yeah. I got my first set of orders. I was like, ah, oh, cool. VFA-15 at Bahrain. That sounds tropical. <laughs> and then I tropical, found out where Bahrain yeah. was, and I was like... Oh my god, who did I... Was it that LTA cussed at? <laughs> did he find out that I was up for orders? He was like, oh, this oh, motherfucker, man. he's going to Bahrain. <laughs> like... I, I remember in boot camp, uh, the pack guys always got their orders before everybody else, and we always wanted to know, mm-hmm. oh, where were we going? Yeah. And the only reason I went pack was three-year contract, $10,000, and I was like, okay, yeah, I that's, that. I you know, it. that's that sounds I'm really nice. I'm mad at you. Yeah, but like, <laughs> um, and I remember it was me and Olan, and <laughs> we got our orders and we opened them up, and I was like, "What the hell is Lamore?" <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, I remember walking into one of the medical guys because that's where they gave us the uh, the letters, and he was like, and "He's like, oh hey, what'd you get?" And I was like, "Lamore, California." And he goes, "Oh no." <laughs> I was like, what? Like, what What do you mean, no, no? And he's like, that's in the middle of nowhere. It's the black hole of the <laughs> They're like, they're like, I think you're probably going to be working on helicopters. And lo and behold, there's like no helicopters out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was expecting to be on a helicopter. And they were like, oh, I don't know what that is. Yeah. And <laughs> nobody knew what that was until I actually got out and got myself a phone after boat, boot camp. And that's all I did was like, where Just is it? And I'm like, text. oh, apparently it smells like shit, too. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> I drive by it every morning. It's yeah. Like that. It's honestly that, that, that sniff. Yeah, Actually, that, that heavy methane that just layers itself. It does. And the thing is, is that I do this. <gasps> and I just press on the gas as fast as I can just to get through it. <laughs> it takes about, like, a good four-minute song. Yeah. So typical Brian Adams track, and then yeah. <laughs> if he's not on some kind of rant for the end part, and uh, and then after that I go, oh, okay, now that I'm done hyperventilating. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm away from that awful stench. Oh, it's just the one farm too. That's the sad no. part behind it. It's the one farm. Mm-hmm. Uh, on your way up to San Francisco from here, the only good thing about being in Lemoore is just having having everything at least two or three hours away because that's not a bad drive like you got the mountains you got yosemite you got san fran you got los angeles uh morrow bay yeah morrow bay too uh monterey they're all like three hours away and it's like oh okay you know and if you really wanted to have a like like a heavy like a long weekend you could always go to san diego Mm -hmm. maybe right not right now because of the coronavirus but i mean I've been thinking about like fashioning like a like a hula hoop <laughs> around me if I was to go to like one of those like big cities. Yeah. Like the suspenders. <laughs> just like put it on and be like, this is my bubble. It's like, don't touch me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Don't touch me. Right. Because I think if we have enough like hula hoops around each other, that would make about six feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just kind of like make it into like a little circle with like three of them. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Good. Yeah, I think that would work. Yeah, yeah like the cupcake hands. Like, <laughs> yeah, like the girls doing the pageants. Mm-hmm. So last question, we'll wrap this up. Uh, what inspires you today, last week, last month? So in a way, like inspires me to what? And, and, Anything. And so, like, Creativity, what basically like, inspires me to get up in the morning and be like, I don't want to die today. No, because that's <laughs> motivation. Motivation is like, I am only motivated to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, get my dog outside, mm-hmm. make something called breakfast, make sure my lunch is good to go, out the front door by 6.30 to get to work because yeah. I've got bills to pay. So <laughs> what inspires me is like things like, for example, when I, uh, okay, perfect example. The moment that we were in the Aiden 
the Sea of Aden. Yeah. That being back there again, but having this like inspiration, this preemptive inspiration of writing music while we were gone Mm -hmm. led me to writing my second solo album, uh, The Other Side. Yeah. Because all my music was written on the other side. Oh, okay. I got you. And each song's a message in a bottle in that way. Each song was written with like a space or a time or a moment that we had experienced in some shape before. Okay. When we were in Aiden, the Sea of Aiden, that's when I wrote the song Aiden. Okay. So, like, it's a dramatic. lot of stuff happened over there. Yeah, exactly. Lots of stuff. So, a lot of figure eights, but like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of unnecessary water in one particular spot. Exactly. But what I'm getting at is like, that. I saw the same wave 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but like things like that, like inspired me that week or that yeah. month. Or for example, like uh, uh, I went to Morro Bay or yeah, Mar- Morro Bay with uh, Hunter and uh, actually like being on the beach line for mm-hmm. the first time was actually really cool because I actually felt like I enjoyed seeing the ocean for once, you yeah. know? Like, it's been, like, four or five months, but... Yeah, seeing it for ten months straight, you're kind of like, I'm over you. Like, yeah. the first two or three months, you're like, wow, it's so beautiful. And then yeah. it's like, after like after a while, you're like, wow, yeah. I just want to leave. <laughs> I want to see a tree. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. But I guess what really inspires me... Um, so, I would say that there's this one uh, thing that I always come back to, and it usually propels me to do stuff. Mm-hmm. It propels me to, like, get discipline going, because I don't believe in motivation. Like, you can have motivation to do something, yeah. but like if you're disciplined, it's a different thing. It's like you're, you're making sure that whenever you wake up, you're doing this. Mm-hmm. There's no other, there's no other way out. Mm-hmm. It's like... Whenever you wake up with no motivation, you're not going to get anything done if you're focused on a motivation to get you through the day. Yeah. It's like you wake up and you know that this is what you have to do today. You're going to get through. So whenever I need to feel that discipline, that that little bit of motivation where I'm like, why am I even doing this? What's going on? It's like, well, what is what is your, like, what's my kid going to think of me? Mm-hmm. It's like, do I really want to be like, the one that, you know, oh, yeah, my dad, you know, sits down and, like, plays video games all day and doesn't do anything and, like, you know, just yells at his TV. Mm-hmm. It's like, of course not. I don't want to be that. And it's like, okay. oh, I want, I want, like, I want my kid to be like, yeah, my dad taught himself Spanish, you know, taught himself how to do this, did this, you know, yeah. he's a guitarist. It's like, whenever you think about, like, how, like, your kid or, like, uh, your future kid is going to, like, view you mm-hmm. and tell his friends about you yeah you at least want to be like well (laughs) well it's like wow i think i would sound interesting or Mm -hmm. you know you want to make that person proud even though if they don't even exist you're just kind of like all right well that's a way to focus on a better me yeah and that's what i that's what i like yeah absolutely that's actually like a really interesting like uh idea because i'm thinking about like my dad Mm -hmm. right like you said like do I want to be that dad who sits on a, on a chair and uh, plays video games and yells at imaginary people in his, <laughs> in um, his head? <laughs> in his head, because you know they're playing Call of Duty and someone decided not to get you know find a sniper. Yeah. Um, the you know, there's a lot that I could probably say about my dad, but uh, he wasn't musically inclined. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know where the hell I got that shit from. Um, Me neither. But. Well, I do know where I got it from. My sister sh- sent me a photo of a letter that she wrote to her grand to our grandmother, mm-hmm. and the first thing she says is, "He's I'm 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 about a year old, and I've been doing nothing but banging on the piano keys." You were. I was. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's the only like. Like thing that like thing kinda... that I could pinch at and go. Here's the reason why. So like, here's like, where it started. Yeah. My dad, on the other hand, I, I mean, I know that all I know is, is this. He could, 
Do you remember the show Jabberjaw? No. It was like Scooby Doo, but with a shark. Ah. Uh, Hanna Barbera. I'll show you a video of it later on. Yeah. But he does this impression of Jabberjaw, and it sounds like it almost sounds like uh, Curly from Three Stooges. Oh really? <laughs> oh okay, yeah. That he would do. I did a really shitty. <laughs> <laughs> version of it but he would do a really good version of it yeah and um also uh i think his name was nick dastardly he was a uh, bad guy in um this other Hanna barbera cartoon yeah and he would always wheeze he, it was laughter but with like a wheezing involved oh okay so he's like really good at voices he was good at voices mm. he was good at making cartoon voices around me yeah you know but he also was like, he was a hard worker. Yeah, and same he, with my dad. He always said that when I asked him what he did, again, like at Lackland Air Force Base, Tinker, etc. He always said, like, you know, I build and unbuild engines. Yeah. So he was an AD. Yeah, okay. But he always said he just plays Legos. <laughs> I could see why that's I get that. a thing. I, yeah. I kind of get that with the, with the field of work that you and I are both in. Yeah. So it's... It's fascinating, and now I, as an adult, I'm like, oh, I get that. I respect mm-hmm. that. I understand the long hours now. Yeah. But um, as a man myself, I see where, um, like him, uh, work gets in front of me, too much in front of me. Yeah. And now it's, it's kind of funny because, like, being a man in my 30s, it's like, did I miss that 10-year window? of starting a family I, not really I i'm totally even say that. fine with sponsoring a kid on my refrigerator at this point <laughs> like i am just not ready it's to like that's my kid sp- where is he he lives in africa I, in a village somewhere. i didn't say africa <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah it, it could be anywhere uh but yeah i'm just not ready to share my super nintendo yet yeah <laughs> it's like <laughs> and i will let my legacy uh <laughs> if it's music if it's uh what i'm doing today um what I did a year ago, two years ago, I'll let that speak for me. And if anyone listens or if anyone knows about it, at least my family does, yeah. I always point back to it. You know, there's so many, how, who, who can still say to say that they know a family member of Bach or Beethoven or Mozart, yeah. but we have their music to go back to. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's what I hope happens in my future. Mm-hmm. Because it could be easily turned into Eric Satie, where no one who's, knows who the fuck that is. Yeah. Except for the one song. And that's it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's okay, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's fine. Yeah. No need to add in more. I think more. I think music done for the sake of its itself, its own passion, is more important than, yeah. like, um, trying to get it to a great audience. Yeah. And it's like, sure, you can make money off of it, and... Um, fairly easy to do so but it's like what what is it at that point is it your way to get rich or is it your uh passion is it you do you lose a little bit of yourself sacrificing uh sacrificing your creative vision for money yeah and like i think that's such a prevalent thing in music today is that you know it's not very like I get that you want to get to a big, broad audience, Mm -hmm. but, I mean, I find music today as in just very repetitive. Mm -hmm. And I really hope that, you know, after this wave of music is done, you know, the huge, like, trap and pop music that always comes through, Mm -hmm. I hope that something comes out where it's, you know... Synth wave? Synth wave. Um, Can we go back to the 80s a little bit? (laughs) Yeah, I I want it to be inherently like like soul filled you know yeah. like i want i want to hear people's soul when they sing or when they make a song yeah. i don't want to hear like i don't want to hear what you did at the club <laughs> you did the exact same thing i did at the club How that's crazy we, uh, take the same words yeah and it's not bad and i'm not saying yeah. if you listen to it it's bad it's the fact that it's everywhere and it doesn't seem to change and I feel like music like is all about expressing music. yourself. Yeah, it's like country music with who is a country star or country artist 
yeah. who is a cowboy or lives that image, yeah, uh, that archetype, and there is always someone that broke their heart. Yep. They're at the bar. The only thing they've got is their dog. Yeah. You play it backwards, and he gets a girl at the end. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Hell, if you play it all the way through, sometimes it gets three. <laughs> yeah, right. It depends, yeah. Oh. Or, uh, or something of non-shenanigans goes down. Yeah. Or like, you know, the dance music out there, like you say, or the, the pop music of today is the same wake up feeling like P. Diddy, yeah. brushing my teeth with a Jack and Coke, hitting the club again because YOLO, yeah. and then dropping my phone in the pool because I'm a klutz. Or, yeah. you know, there's like easily... Songs that's like, that's why I like um like in those roles. I really like uh Lil Dicky yeah. and uh what he does yeah. because I like the way that he plays with uh like a uh, a standard like you know like a rap. Mm-hmm. So it's like everybody knows what a rap is, mm-hmm. but he plays with it so well mm-hmm. that like he's still a great rapper, mm-hmm. but the things that he's saying is completely different than anybody else. Like no one talks about like yeah. Like Missy Anything Elliott. that he says. Missy Elliott, when I was first learning yeah. hip-hop music, learning hip-hop, she was my introduction mm-hmm. to hip-hop. I can't not think of a better artist to start with. Maybe Salt and Pepper. But, uh, <laughs> or like Mary J. Blige. But Missy Elliott came out with uh, So Addictive. Yeah. And that had um, Get Your Freak On and uh so many other songs and she was bringing up an artist named tweet and uh it that her articulation of words and the imagery with it Mm -hmm. as a poet and not just a poet but even being using foul language it was my first oh yeah first album okay uh (laughs) which i paid 20 bucks for at a at a (laughs) cd store um but yeah like it it was totally worth it just for that experience and to feel that and yeah. totally get that because it was completely something you did not hear on the radio. Mm-hmm. You heard it in movies. That's like my song. first uh, my first introduction to rap was Eminem. Oh, okay. And um, wait, I wait, what part of Eminem? Slim Shady it? and Marshall Mathers LP. Yes. Those okay. Uh, those two will never be beat, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, as a rap album goes, yeah. uh, I think Kendrick Lamar comes pretty close with a lot of his stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, like how much a dollar cost by him made me really think about like how we treat, you know, um, homelessness, mm-hmm. and like how you know how much does it really cost to give somebody a dollar? Yeah. How much does it cost you? Because it's not just the monetary value; it's yeah. how much you're giving or how much you're not giving, and to make it like such a poetic form i was like wow like i haven't heard stuff like this except for you know like stan or Mm -hmm. um you know cleaning out my closet um Mm -hmm. where like he can be that funny you know like uh like i'm the real slim shady right Yeah, that character he can be that character but he can also say something that's real like kim Mm -hmm. like when i first heard kim um i wasn't ready for how violent it was gonna be yeah but it was so his delivery his the way that he really expressed himself is what let me like grab onto him as an artist and be like okay i understand you now like i understand what you're trying to say and like there's so much pain rage and anger in you that like it really affected who you are as a person and how you cope with it and you see that through his entire life but it's like such a prevalent moment that when he like when the moment comes he lets it all out Mm -hmm. And that's something I can inherently respect, especially when it comes to music. Because you're not out there actually going to kill your fucking ex-wife. You're there no, you're expressing... Not. As a man who's been divorced. Yeah. Well, no, you're not. <laughs> you're, you're expressing how much pain and anger you have through the medium of music. And that's something I respect infinitely more. Totally. Um, but yeah. Well, thanks for uh, doing this for, with me. Yeah, uh, no problem. I hope you enjoyed it. I do. Just another sit down and talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what we usually do. <laughs> but um, you're like one of those dudes that like, we talk like this and I'm like, wow, I feel so much better Yeah. afterwards. And I really do appreciate this, especially for it to be my first episode back. Oh, okay. Since the last time I did this. Um, how, how long ago was it? Like a year. 
Oh, okay. Literally a Deployment. Year ago. Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like I said, like I just, you know, uh, I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much for your time, man. Yeah. Awesome to be here. Learn a little something today. <laughs> I hope so.